and welcome back to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie. And this week, we are focusing on Hispanic Heritage Month, and we've chosen books by Latino authors. So I'll turn it over to Jill for her first pick. Okay, you've probably seen this one on a lot of lists. Mexican Gothic. It was published in 2020, and it's on a ton of reading lists. It is a horror and historical fiction, and it's also by Latina author Silvia Moreno-Garcia. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from mysterious doom, Noemi Toboda heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She's not sure what she will find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger, and Noemi knows little about the region. Noemi is also an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante, and her chic gowns and perfect red lipstick are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough and smart, with an indomitable will, and she's not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch, who seems to be fascinated by Naomi. And not even by the house itself, which begins to invade Naomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally in this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son. Shy and gentle, he seems to want to help Noemi. So, but he might also be hiding a dark knowledge of his family's past. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and faded mining empire keep them from prying eyes. But as Noemi digs dip deeper, she unearths stories of violence and madness. And Naomi... Mesmerized by the terrifying yet seductive world of High Place may soon find it impossible to ever leave this house behind. So haunted house. Uh, the author, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, is the author of several novels, including Velvet Was the Night, Mexican Gothic, Gods of Jade, and Shadow and Untamed Shore. She is self-acclaimed Mexican by birth and Canadian by inclination. So, Did you read that one? I did not yet, but this is on my list. Mine too, and it's getting higher and closer and closer to the top. It's close to the <laughs> Halloween, so haunted houses. And my first pick is an author we've used before, I believe, Isabel Allende. This is one of her newer books, The Soul of a Woman, which was published in 2021. Um, she's a New York Times best-selling author of the book A Long Petal of the Sea. And this is a passionate and inspiring meditation on what it means to be a woman. As a young woman coming of age in the late 1960s, she rode the first wave of feminism. Among a tribe of like-minded female journalists, she for the first time felt comfortable in her own skin as they wrote with a knife between their teeth about women's issues. She has seen what has been accomplished by the movement in the course of her lifetime, and over the course of three passionate marriages, she has learned how to grow as a woman while having a partner, when to step away, and the rewards of embracing one's sexuality. So what do women want? To be safe, to be valued, to live in peace, to have their own resources, to be connected, to have control over their bodies and lives, and above all, to be loved. On these fronts, there is much work to be done, and this book, Allende hopes, will light the torch of our daughters and granddaughters. They will have to live for us as we lived for our mothers and carry on with the work still left to be finished. Our short story group at the library has discussed a couple of her short stories. We did And of Clay Are We Created and Two Words, and both were very moving, so they all enjoyed her style of writing. So check out The Soul of a Woman by Isabel Allende, just published in 2021. Brand new. <laughs> I have another horror. This one is contemporary. Um, it includes some mystery to it. It's called Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melkor. It's published in 2017 and earned 4.12 stars on Goodreads, which anything above four stars on Goodreads, yeah. I think, is probably pretty good. The witch is dead, and the discovery of her corpse by a group of children playing near the irrigation canals propels the whole village into an investigation of how and why this murder occurred. Rumors and suspicions spread as the novel unfolds in a dazzling linguistic torrent, with each unreliable narrator lingering on new details, new acts of depravity and brutality. Melcourt extracts some tiny shred of humanity from these characters that most would write off as utterly irredeemable, forming a lasting portrait of a damned Mexican village. Like Faulkner's greatest novels, Hurricane Season takes place in a world filled with mythology and violence. Real violence, the kind that seeps into the soil, poisoning everything around. It's a world that becomes more terrifying the deeper you explore it. So, the author, Fernanda McCor, was born in Veracruz, Mexico. So, yeah. 
My second pick for today is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is in our classics collection here at the library. In 1967, Sudamericana Press published 100 Years of Solitude, a novel written by a little-known Colombian author. Neither the writer nor the publisher expected much of this book. They knew that many a novel is dead the day it is published. Unexpectedly, 100 Years of Solitude went on to sell over 45 million copies, solidified its stature as a literary classic, and garnered the author fame and acclaim as one of the greatest Spanish language writers in history. Notice on the cover of this one, it was a Oprah's Book Club pick. The brilliant best-selling landmark novel tells the story of the Buendia family and chronicles the irreconcilable conflict between the desire for solitude and the need for love in rich imaginative prose that has come to define an entire genre known as magical realism. This book has been described as inventive, amusing, magnetic, sad, and alive with unforgettable men and women. It is brimming with truth, compassion, and a lyrical magic that strikes the soul. This author is a Pulitzer Prize winner. He's also written Love in the Time of Cholera, Chronicles of a Death Foretold, which is a novella of Love and Other Demons, and many other books. So check out the writings of Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Love in the Time of Cholera was kind of on my list for this. Yeah, <laughs> that's a popular one, too, of his. <clears throat> <clears throat> My next one's a little more lighthearted. You Had Me at Hola by <laughs> Alexis Darla. This is a Rita Award-winning author. Alexis Darla brings readers on an unforgettable, hilarious rom-com set in the drama-filled world of telenovelas. So this is perfect for fans of Jane the Virgin and the Kiss Quotient. <laughs> Love Jane the Virgin. After a messy public breakup, soap opera darling Jasmine Lynn Rodriguez finds her face splashed across the tabloids. When she returns to her hometown of New York City to film the starring role in a bilingual romantic comedy for the number one streaming service in the country, Jasmine figures her new leading lady plan should be easy enough to follow until a casting shakeup pairs her with telenovela hunk Ashton Suarez. <laughs> After his latest telenovela character was killed off, Ashton is worried his career is dead as well. Joining this new cast as a last-minute addition will give him a chance to show off his acting chops to American audience and ping the radar of Hollywood casting agents. To make it work, he'll need genuine smoking hot on-screen chemistry with Jasmine. Easier said than done, <laughs> especially when the disastrous first impression smothers the embers of whatever sexual heat they might have had. With their careers on the line, Jasmine and Ashton agree to rehearse in private, but rehearsal leads to kissing, and kissing leads to behind-the-scenes romance worthy of a soap opera. While their on-screen performance improves, the media spotlight on Jasmine soon threatens to destroy her new image and expose Ashton's most closely guarded secret. Alexis Daria, the author, writes stories about successful Latinx characters and their occasional messy families. You Had Me at Hola is the first book in her Primas of Power series. So if you like this book, there's more <laughs> like it. Sounds like it would be a funny read. Yeah. <laughs> Telenovelas. <laughs> My third pick is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This is an older book again. This was published back in 1984. Acclaimed by critics, beloved by readers of all ages, taught everywhere from inner-city grade schools to universities across the country, and translated all over the world, The House on Mango Street is the remarkable story of Esperanza Cordero. Told in a series of vignettes, sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes deeply joyous, it is the story of a young Latina girl growing up in Chicago, inventing for herself who and what she will become. Few other books in our lifetime have touched so many readers. Sandra Cisneros, the author, is a poet, a short story writer, novelist, essayist, performer, and artist whose work explores the lives of the working class. In addition to her writing, she has also fostered the careers of many aspiring and emerging writers through two nonprofits that she founded. This novel has also appeared on the band book list um, from several school curriculums, um, and it gets frequently challenged the, because of its depictions of domestic and sexual violence, but it is acclaimed to be read by people of all ages. So, The House on Mango Street, and I have to say I haven't read this one. I see it on so many must-read lists, mm -hmm. too, like for different reasons. <clears throat> the next one is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. This is a historical fiction from the point of view of an immigrant. 15-year-old Anna never dreamed of moving to America the way girls she grew up with in the Dominican countryside did. But when 
Juan Rees proposes and promises to take her to New York City, she has to say yes. It doesn't matter that he is twice her age, but there is no love between them. Their marriage is an opportunity for her entire close-knit family to eventually immigrate. So on New Year's Day in 1965, Anna leaves behind everything she knows and becomes Anna Rees, a wife confined to a cold six-floor walk-up in Washington Heights. Lonely and miserable, Anna hatches a reckless plan to escape. But at the bus terminal, she is stopped by Caesar, Juan's free-spirited younger brother who convinces her to stay. As the Dominican Republic slides into political, political turmoil, Juan returns to protect his family's assets, leaving Cesar to take care of Anna. Uh, suddenly, Anna is free to take English lessons at local church, lie on the beach on Coney Island, see a movie at Radio City Music Hall, go dancing with Cesar, and imagine the possibility of a different kind of life in America. When Juan returns, Anna must decide once again between her heart and her duty to her family. And this book is actually also available on InfoSoup in Spanish for the oh, Spanish people. Very cool. So that's kind of fun. My fourth pick for today is How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents by Julia Alvarez, published in 2005. Uprooted from their family home in the Dominican Republic, the four Garcia sisters, Carla, Sandra, Yolanda, and Sofia arrive in New York City in 1960 to find a life far different from the general genteel existence of maids, manicures, and the extended family they left behind. What they have lost and what they find is revealed in the 15 interconnected stories that make up this exquisite novel from one of the premier novelists of our time. Julia Alvarez left the Dominican Republic for the United States in 1960 at the age of 10. She's the author of six novels, three books of nonfiction, three collections of poetry, and 11 books for kids and young adults. She has taught and mentored in schools and communities across America, and until her retirement back in 2016, was a writer in residence at Middlebury College. Her, worker, her work excuse me, has garnered wide recognition, including a Latina Leader Award in Literature from the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute, the Hispanic Heritage Award in Literature, and the Woman of the Year by Latina Magazine, amongst other awards. So check out one of the books by Julia Alvarez, How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents. I wonder if they really did lose their accent. <laughs> My next pick is a new nonfiction. It's called Once I Was Once I Was You, a memoir of love and hate in a torn America by Maria Hinojosa. Maria Hinojosa is an award-winning journalist who is known for bringing humanity to her reporting. In this beautifully rendered memoir, she relates the history of U.S. immigration policy that has brought us where we are today as she shares her deeply personal story. In Once I Was You, Maria shares her experience growing up Mexican-American in the south side of Chicago, documenting the existen existential wasteland of immigration detention camps for news outlets that often challenged her work. She offers a personal eye-opening account of how the rhetoric around immigration has not only long informed American attitudes towards outsiders, but also enabled willful negligence and profiteering at the expense of our country's most vulnerable populations, charging us with a broken system we have today. This honest and heart-rendering memoir paints a vivid portrait of how we got here and what it means to be a survivor, a feminist, a citizen, a journalist who owns her voice while striving for the truth. One Side Was You is an urgent call for fellow Americans to open their eyes to an immigration crisis and understand that it affects us all. So, yeah. what is My this? last what, pick. What is this for? You want to stop it? And my last pick for today is by Juno, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his first name correct, Diaz, published in 1997, and this is a book called Drown. This author, just like Gabriel Garcia Marquez, is also a Pulitzer Prize winner. You may be familiar with some of his other books, This Is How You Lose Her, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wao, and his debut picture book called Island Born. In this book, with 10 stories that move again from the Dominican Republic to the struggling urban communities of New Jersey, this author made his remarkable debut with this one. His work is unflinching and strong, and these stories crackle with an electric sense of discovery. He evokes a world in which fathers are gone, mothers fight with grim determination for their families, and the next generation inherits the casual cruelty, devastating ambivalence, and knowing humor of lives circumscribed by poverty and uncertainty. In Drown, Diaz has harnessed the rhythms of anger and release, frustration and joy to an indelible effect. So this one got very good reviews also, and it's not an author that I'm familiar with. I see the Oscar Wilde or Oscar 
the Oscar Wilde, the, yeah, that the one. Brief Wonder's Life of Oscar Wilde. That one's yeah. on an always recommended list, too. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope this helps you celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and find something new to read. Like, comment, share our video. We always like to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye. Bye.